Hey everybody, today I am going to be opening an oddball wax box of 1986 Topps Mini Liters. I was thinking about doing a series and calling it like Weird Wax Wednesdays or something like that for a while, but I have other ideas for Wednesdays um, coming up. I always do my case breaks on Wednesdays, and in the spring I'm going to be starting a series, hopefully, called Wiffle Ball Win. My brother and I choose teams and play a wiffle ball game similar to what Dodgers Films does, except with wiffle ball instead of softball. And we'll be asking for subscribers that would like to participate in that. Um, I think that should be pretty fun, like keeping stats and everything, because uh, wiffle ball was one of uh, my favorite things to do when I was little. My brother and I used to play it every single day. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to do this series on Monday for now, uh, opening oddball wax boxes from various years and stuff. So this box I picked up for $5. I bought a collection of 50,000 plus cards this past week and this was one of the boxes that he had. Uh, he was selling all his wax boxes for like $5 a piece. I might, I might have overpaid for this box a little bit, I don't know. Uh, let me show you what this set is worth in the Beckett Almanac. You can see it's listed here, 86 tops mini liters. It's not a valuable set. There's only 66 cards in the set. Uh, the complete set is worth $4, high value in Beckett, and the best cards are a Kyle Ripken is valued at $2, high price. Other dollar cards, George Brett books at a buck, Don Mattingly books at a buck. And over here, there's not that many cards. We'll probably get the whole set and then some. You can see the Nolan Ryan is 2 bucks, and the Tony Gwynn is worth a buck. So this is the actual size of the card. These are called mini leaders. Here is an actual baseball card. You can see that they are somewhat smaller as compared to a regular um, standard issued card, but they're pretty cool. I used to buy these all the time when we would go to Hills, uh, 1989 Topps mini leaders I would buy. And I really liked 89 Topps mini leaders because they had a very similar design to 1989 Tops, and some of my favorite players were in there. And they were only a quarter a pack back then. So you can see, uh, in 1986, they were also a quarter pack. You get six cards per pack for a quarter. And you could always look through the back, at least the 1989 ones. You could look through the back, like this player, uh, last name starts with an MC. So you could probably figure out who that was if you knew the checklist very well. Um, so my brother and I used to do that looking for Pirates players. Um, you could also kind of see some of the stats and determine if it was a hitter or a pitcher. Um, that was like the rudimentary early stages of pack searching. But I mean, we didn't mean anything by it. We weren't trying to get viable cards. We were trying to get pirates like an Andy Van Slyke or a Bobby Bonilla cards that weren't worth anything. Um, and we were only like, I was eight, my brother was four, so we didn't know any better. Um, nowadays, if you pack search, you should not pack search, so just don't do it. Anyway, 36 cards per box. Um, here's what the side of the box looks like. Um, here's what the bottom of the box looks like. And here is the other side. So let's get right to it. 66 cards in here, and what they did was they chose players that led the league in various categories. You can see they also did spring fever baseball back then. Got a little bit of a scratch on my thumb there from my dog. I was playing with him earlier. And uh, he's a big German Shepherd, so he can be um, somewhat, um, I don't know, somewhat careless when he's playing because he doesn't know his own size. Um, he didn't mean to scratch me, but it happened. So in that first pack, we got nobody. There's a Mike Schmidt, that's a nice card. Uh, you can see this is what the back looks like. It tells you what he led the league in or was among the leaders in. He hit 33 home runs in 1985, which put him third in a tie in the league. Uh, also had all their stats there, which I always thought was pretty cool. Pedro Guerrero, my brother used to like um, Pedro Guerrero a lot. So Jack Clark and Danny Cox. So... Looking for a Kyle Ripken Jr. and Owen Ryan. Those would be the best ones. I also could probably put together the entire set. You would figure 36 packs, six cards per pack. There's a Ryan Sandberg. That's a nice card. Check out the back. What did he lead the league in? Led the league in runs and also stolen bases? Ryan Sandberg. You don't really think of him as being a speedster, but he stole 54 bases early on in his career. There's a John Tudor. A Doc Gooden, Dwight Gooden. And there's the Kyle Ripken Jr. valued at $2. That's a pretty cool-looking card. Um, led the league in runs and game-winning RBIs. Tops always used to track GW RBIs on the back of their 80s cards. That was like a big stat back in the day. 
Um, now it's war, wins above replacement. But back then, game-winning RBIs was considered like a uh, measure of how clutch you were. There's an another Cal Ripken Jr. card. Bob Welch, Harold Baines, Hall of Famer Harold Baines. That's a nice one. There's a checklist. You can see there's only 66 cards in the set. And the cards are ordered alphabetically by team. So they put the teams in alphabetic order, starting with the Baltimore Orioles and then Boston Red Sox and Chicago White Sox and so on. And then within those little teams, the players were arranged in alphabetical order. So that's how that is done. There's the players on the back, mostly National League guys. And um, still looking for the Tony Gwynn, which would be pretty nice. Ron Guidry and Tim Raines, another Hall of Famer, Tim Raines. Okay, on to the next pack. There's other oddball sets and wax boxes that I've been buying um, that we can start looking through. Top's big. There's some with stickers in them. So if you know any good um, off-brand or oddball sets you'd like me to open up um, in the coming weeks, let me know. There's a nice Ricky Henderson card. How many stolen bases do you think he had in 1985? Probably over 100. Um, stolen bases, not 80, which is still really good. Check out those stats. Sling percentage, 516 is a leadoff hitter, 24 home runs, 99 walks. The guy was a beast. And then Wade Boggs probably led the league in doubles or was right up there in doubles. 42 doubles, but number one in batting average of 368. Wade Boggs, one of the best hitters of the 80s. All right, next one, um, we have a Burt Blylevin. He's a Hall of Famer. Bruce Hurst, Daryl Evans, Frank Viola, and a Willie Wilson. Pretty good leadoff hitter right there, Willie Wilson. And Sid Fernandez. Never used to like Sid Fernandez for some reason. Um, probably because he was on the Mets, and the Mets were the Pirates' um, arch nemesis of the late 80s. So I was not a fan of any Mets players. Nowadays, I don't really care at all. There's a Carlton Fisk. That's a nice-looking card. Carlton Fisk, of course, is a Hall of Famer. Oh, Hershiser. Famous for his consecutive innings streak. Tom Browning threw a no-hitter. And there's the Tony Gwynn. Tony Gwynn, one of, um, I wouldn't say he was my favorite player, but I do have my earliest memory of almost catching a foul ball came off the bat at Tony Gwynn at Three River Stadium. Landed like three rows behind me. Like I remember just looking up and tracking the ball. Um, I was probably only like eight or nine years old. Here's a Don Magley card. Dave Winfield. I didn't used to go to too many games as a kid. Um, that particular game I went with my friend and his dad. My family would go to maybe like one game a year. And typically we would usually get tickets from our dentist office. Um, my dentist was always um, having a raffle every time we went there. You could put your name in a box. And I think we won them at least twice from our dentist. Four tickets. Um... There's another Tony Gwynn. So you're going to see, we're probably going to get like four or five of each of these cards, which is pretty nice. There's a George Brett, another Hall of Famer there. Led the league in, or was among the league leaders in a bunch of categories. Hit 335. I think in 1980, he hit 390. George Brett, one of the best hitters of the late 70s and 80s. There's the Nolan Ryan. That's the first time we saw that one, Ryan Express. You know he led the league in strikeouts. Actually, number three with 209. A um, little bit of a down year for the Ryan Express there, but still over 200 strikeouts. There was a lot of years where he was in the upper 300s and finished his career with over 5,000 strikeouts. All right, our next one, next pack, Rick Rushell, a Pirates player there. Um, I most remember Rick Rushell for his time with the Giants. Because I believe he was on the Giants when I was collecting cards in the late 80s. Another Harold Baines. Another checklist. We're going to start seeing some repeats now. Just got done playing MLB The Show against one of my Patreon patrons. I just put a post up. Who wants to play? Ended up losing one to nothing. There's a nice Dale Murphy. That's the card that's on the box. Top right there. Dale Murphy. Not a Hall of Famer. But someday he might be. You never know. Um... He's got very similar stats to uh, some of the guys that are in there. Del Murphy was a dominant player of the 80s. All right, next pack, Gary Carter, Hall of Famer. Gary Pettis, a great leadoff hitter. Uh, oh, I just got a notification that one of my watched items is ending soon in 14 minutes. So I'm going to have to hurry up and get in there and bid on it. I'm bidding on a 1981 Topps authenticated box. 
Wax box of cards, 1981. Fernando Valenzuela rookie card is in there. Kurt Gibson rookie card. Tim Raines. And uh, those boxes, you can buy one, buy it now for about $315. I'm hoping to get it for a little bit less and then do th that for one of our upcoming Throwback Thursdays. I think this coming week, Throwback Thursday, we're probably going to do 1993 Top Series 1 and try to find a Derek Jeter. Either that or 1984 Tops authenticated box. I'll choose one of them. I'll probably do the 93 Tops since I just did 85 Tops last week. We found the Mark McGuire, which was pretty cool. Oh, another notification from eBay just popped up. It's a 1982 Donruss authenticated box. Really love doing Throwback Thursdays and opening old packs for you guys. I think those are pretty awesome. They're pretty fun to see packs that a lot of us never opened. Like, I never got to open a lot of these packs um, from before 19, like 1985 and before. Never really bought any of those because they they weren't in large supply. Eddie Murray, Hall of Famer. All right, let's see what we have next. Yeah, so Wiffle Ball Wednesdays is something that I'm looking forward to doing. My brother and I will be captains, and hopefully we could get, I don't know, like 10 people or so. And uh, you only really need to field an infield. Pitcher, catcher, first baseman, maybe like a shortstop at third baseman, you're pretty much good to go. Thing about Wiffle Ball, um, you could play anywhere. Like, we could be like, all right, guys, let's meet at this in this park. And... Uh, that's what we used to do. We used to make boundaries about what whatever was uh, a natural boundary, like the pavement would be a home run or, you know, a stream could be a home run. So the cool thing about doing a wiffle ball series is we could literally change the venue every time and, and have, like, different crazy rules. I remember when my brother and I used to play, uh, we used to play in our backyard all the time, and we had a gigantic maple tree in our backyard. which literally took up almost the entire yard, and we would play underneath it, Mike Schmidt. We had a fence going around, so you'd have to hit it over the, the white picket fence, but to do so, you had to get it up through the maple tree, and a lot of times you would literally crush one, but the tree would bat it down, and it'd be like a pinball machine up there, and you would hear it like coming down, and you'd be looking up trying to find it. Uh, those were fun times. Um, me and my brother and some of the neighborhood kids used to always play that. Obviously, in our Wiffle Ball Wednesday, we wouldn't want to have a giant tree in the way, but I mean, we could have some sort of obstacle in there, depending on where we decide to play. Another Mike Schmidt. I could probably put together the set a few times right now, like I said before. I think we've seen all the best players, at least all the high dollar ones that I pointed out. If you could consider a dollar or two a high dollar. There's another Ryan Sandberg, Cal Ripken Jr. And I think that's our third one from the Orioles there. 1988 Orioles. I was reading an article about them the other day. They started the season 0 and 21. Kyle Ripken Jr. started off that season hitting 0 47. Um, Kyle Ripken Jr.'s dad got fired like a week into the season. Frank Robinson took over, and um, it's a really good article. I think it was, I can't remember where exactly I read it at, but Eddie Murray, another Hall of Famer. That's about the third or fourth time we've seen him. Almost done with this box. No gum in this, by the way, which kind of stinks. I mean, it would have been cool to have gum, but for a quarter, it's not a bad deal for a pack of cards. Six cards for a quarter. I guess that's, um, if you think about it, you could get a 1986 pack for 35 cents. So actually, probably this wasn't that good of a deal back then because you could get a pack of 15 1986 regular cards and a piece of gum for 35 cents. Here you're paying a quarter for um, less than half as many cards. But, I mean, you are getting the best players because these are all all-stars for the most part. All right, two packs left to go. And um, Jack Clark is in there, Glenn Wilson, Ryan Sandberg again, John Tudor. I remember John Tudor. I used to play RBI 1 all the time, and uh, John Tudor was on the 87 Cardinals. RBI one for NES. I always used to like to do the uh, American League team and pitch with Brett Saberhagen. The side armor was really impossible to hit. If you never played the game, you probably have no idea what I'm talking about. Last pack on this oddball wax uh, Monday or 
Weird Wax Monday, I guess. Don Mattingly again, Dave Winfield, Lonnie Smith, and Dwight Evans. So that's it for the box. Those are all the cards. If you'd like to buy all these cards, as always, I will put them on eBay, and you can purchase them for what I paid for them, $5 for the box. You can probably put together at least, I don't know, two or three sets, maybe more. Um, that set is worth $4, so, I mean, keep one for yourself and sell the others or whatever you want to do with them, I don't know. Um, I already have most of these cards. I think I have all these cards, actually. So I don't mind sending them along to somebody for 5 bucks. So thank you, everyone, for watching. Um, tomorrow I might be bringing you our antique um, mall recap from this weekend. Elsa loves her Elsa dolls. On Wednesday, we have our mixer break of Topps update from 2010 through 2018. All right, everybody. I will see you later. Thank you so much for watching. And the giveaway for this month are these two boxes, 2015 Donruss, 2016 Donruss. All you have to do is like, subscribe, and comment in the video, and I'll choose one unique commenter per video to be a finalist from every video posted this month. Good luck, everybody. To all of my Patreon patrons, especially my channel sponsors, all of these people, and there's links in the description to go to their YouTube channels and check them out.